The Build Show Bill Boston series is sponsored by Alora Fiber Cement Siding, Mitsubishi Electric Train US, Roseburg, Shuko USA, and Warmboard. All right, so I climbed up on the roof. Obviously, I, I need to stay away from the edges here. Um, took a seat here, so we're not at risk of me walking around, but you can see behind us here, the guys are uh, all taking a break and they're on their cell phones. They're actually watching Build Show Build Boston. All right, so I managed my way up to the top of the roof here, trying to stay away from the edges. Yes, I'm not tied off, but that's why I parked my butt down. And you can see over my shoulder here, we actually have the flat roof going down. The rubber membrane is going down. You can see the guys are uh, out rolling. It's like a contact adhesive cement. So they roll it both on the top of the insulation board and they roll it on the underside of the EPDM membrane. And then basically they'll fold it over. You can see here that the typical lap is right around six inches or so that they have the lap there. We've been really good about limiting the penetrations and such going through there. The plumber has come and we walk through. He has put some pipes up through there. These guys know where they are and we drop the pipe back down. We'll push it back up and they'll put the boot around it and uh, waterproof it. You can see that on the edge there, they are letting it flop over. We'll cut that back underneath the metal coping that we're gonna put around the perimeter and then we'll just have a really quick patch that goes from the metal coping back onto the uh, rubber roof. But yeah, I just wanted you to see there. You can see there's a ridge line that runs along the top and the ridge lines go down to each of the corners. So while it can't be really seen, it is a sloping roof. You know, people say flat roofs and you hear, well, there's no such thing as a flat roof because you'll avoid the warranty if you built it as a true flat roof. So. This one actually has a one quarter inch per foot slope to it. That water will get dropped off over the edge, drip off the coping, go into our rain gutter water management system there, get taken down into the ground. And then whether you're on the front or the back, it'll go to different places. But uh, anyways, that's the flat roof installation of the rubber there. So, you know, we have some other stuff we're gonna be talking about. We got metal roof going on some of these slope sections, so stay tuned. Made our way up to the roof. Yes, my 150 pound frame. I pretty much ran up the ladder. Um, nothing, uh, hey, when we're talking construction, man, I'm racing there. So, got Kevin, LDS Construction, one of the guys in charge, Kevin and Jared, and uh, Pleasure to see you again, buddy. Good to see you. So we're up on the roof. We have our flat roof here. We have one of our sloped roofs behind us. We're obviously embarking on doing the roofing here, but I thought today we're gonna to concentrate. The guys have been working on the flat roof. Um, in a few days, we'll come back and we'll hit up the uh, sloped metal roof. But so, flat roof. You initially came in and you put down a peel and stick down here. Now, this isn't really part of the required assembly. No. This was put down solely to just keep water from migrating in and wreaking havoc downstairs on the window installation and all of that. So this is basically, I just call it a temporary roof until we get the real, real roof on it. Yep. And this is just Zip's standard peel and stick underlayment. On the sloped roofs, we actually went with their high temp product yes. here. So we got that all covered also but we use the high temp product under there because you don't want this stuff oozing out underneath the fascia and melting under the sun so this stuff here it's going to be basically buried under the insulation here in literally a few hours so you can see here around the perimeter we have a three inch curb and that's part of that roof detail that i de developed for this particular project. And the whole purpose of that was 
By the time I get to the middle of the roof, I want some substantial insulation value. And if I just started out at the edge of the roof with, say, a half inch taper, by the time I got to the middle, yeah, I might be up at three, three and a half inches, but I don't have a lot for that first third on that taper. So by building up the three inch curb and then building a fascia that complements that, that means on my plus 20 inch overhang, I am already starting at about R20 or so with the rigid insulation on top so that by the time I do get to the middle of the roof here, I'm up in the low to mid R30s um, for an R value on the top side of the roof. Now, Kevin, I know, you know there's a lot of things that happen with roofers, penetrations for one. I know you worked with the plumber, Bob. Um, you and Bob got together yep. and we have three sections of flat roof. And basically in each of those sections, you guys coordinated a single vent penetration through the roof. Yeah, so we had uh, Bob come out, we scheduled with uh, RGC Plumbing and the roofer. Um, and we wanted to get him out here to get these penetrations through before we get the rubber down. Right. So what we do now is he gives us all our locations on, on three locations throughout the house. And we don't permanently set the pipe in place uh, what we do is we just, we tack it in there, the rubber will go, the insulation goes on, right. the rubber goes on after that, and then what we do is we take this pipe out, and then once the rubber's down, we have a boot that will go in place of that, and we're able to run the vent pipe through gotcha. that boot. Gotcha. So, just as a, as a clarifier, it's always good to run through things. So, you worked with the plumber. Now, yep. you and I, we, we communicated a couple parameters. One of the things that I said about the vent pipe, I want it to be black. You yep. guys obviously got the black pipe. I want it to be the smallest diameter possible. So we relied on Bob sizing that. Um, as far as location, get it as close to the middle of the roof as possible. And the reason for that is actually twofold. The more I put it in the center, the further you have to walk away from the house to actually see it. But two, you have to remember, this is actually a tapered insulation and we're going to get into that in a second but the middle of the roof is the highest point the highest point sees the least amount of water so if i put the vent pipe at the top of the ridge it is going to see the least challenge than say at the bottom of the sloping roof yes right so you put that pipe in i can see it has a little temporary seal there but they'll put the insulation in and basically work around that and then you'll simply just push that pipe, you'll drop it down. We'll, yes, we'll drop this down into the house, let them do their insulation and rubber, yep. and then we'll bring the boot and Basically bring the pipe drill the back hole, in. Push the pipe up through there, and then that boot comes over the top of the finished roof membrane and gets sealed. And yeah, and the reason for doing that is so that we don't have to cut the rubber um, a significant amount of length so that we don't have to tape that. So we're, right. we're bringing one piece, we'll go over that whole area. So yeah, because if we left that, trying to coordinate the donut hole to slide the membrane down while you're trying to add the uh, adhesive, it just becomes a nightmare. Exactly. And the guys would want to just cut a seam and then lap that seam. This is a much easier aspect that everything stays pretty much intact, which is, you know, from a water management perspective, you want to do the least, the very least challenge to any of our waterproofing or water management components that we have to do. Correct. So let's talk a little bit about insulation. We talked about my reasoning for coming up on the edge three inches. Um, we're using a Atlas foam. It is a polyisocyanurate. So it has, I believe it's about an R7 per inch. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yes, people are gonna make comments, the colder it gets, maybe it loses some R value, whatever the case, but we're, we're in that R7 range. You can see here, it is tapered. You know, down there, we're probably at an inch and a half. Up here, we're probably at uh, two and a half inches. So we get that quarter of an inch taper per foot. And obviously, We'll build that up from the three inches. They, 
you know, when we have the inch and a half down here, the first piece they'll put down is a two inch piece and then they'll drop this on top and that way there we get this flush with the uh, top of that. But uh, yeah, Atlas insulation, it's got a uh, kind of a paper felt face so it takes that contact cement very, very well. Um, the way that you install this, thanks Kev. Yep. These are just, you know, typical roofing uh, washers and screws. Now, the screws, I, I just grabbed one out of the bucket, but there's actually varying inches. We need about an inch and a half to two inches of embedment here. So this screw is obviously a little large for that, but you also have to remember underneath here, we could potentially have another couple inches. So the screw would be very good for down here. The uh, large washer is nothing more than to spread the load, just like a concrete spread footing, spread it across a larger surface to uh, get that holding power, embed that down into the uh, roof joist there, and then we put our roofing membrane over the top of that. And on this project, I don't know, Kev, if you want to talk about what we're using here. So we're using Versco um, 60 mil uh, rubber that gets applied um, on glue on the rubber and then glue on the insulation and then all rolled out, rolling everything yeah. out, making sure all the uh, bubbles are out of it. So yeah, I saw the guys, you know, over there, they're installing some, they, they're, they're very diligent about sweeping the roof yep. before they put this on then putting the contact cement, very cautious about, you know, walking across it. Cause what you don't want to do is leave a screw or a nail and then you flip this over and all of a sudden you see the outline of a right. screw or nail there. And then you have to pull it all apart and that's just one hell that's of a mess. Fun. So work slower to be faster. Um, but yeah, 60 mil EPDM membrane, Versico. I believe these come in what? This is a 12 foot wide roll is pretty yeah. standard yep. for that. And um, so a roof like this, you know, two, two and a half passes, we get that on there. Um, yeah, and this should last a very long time. I know uh, I had gotten some questions um, on social media when I posted a detail of the roof. People are asking, when you put the uh, insulation board on, why don't you put a protection board or something right on top? Why are you adhering the membrane right to the insulation and uh, we had uh, Jared and Scott the homeowner we talked with Argino who is the uh, roofing subcontractor and he said you know pretty much all of his roofs they pretty much adhere it right to the insulation um, I'm pretty confident in it now if we said this was a more of a commercial roof or a roof that I was coming out to put decking on or for some reason it was gonna get some high foot traffic, mechanical equipment out here, then yeah, maybe it's worth the investment. But if we're just doing a roof that's total job in the next 100 years is to just shed water, then I don't think we need that protection board no. on there. So nope. anyways, let's jump over on the other side. We got some guys gluing down and uh, putting down some of the rubber. We can go check that out. We'll check out uh, some of the foam installation here and uh, yeah, flat roofs getting done out here at Build Show Build Boston. We're up on the top of the roof here. You can see we're installing our tapered insulation. We're actually putting in the very last piece. But the strategy here is that we have a roof gutter on that side, we have roof gutter on that side. And so the high point is literally right here in the middle of the roof and it slopes in both directions. You can see we have uh, the gentleman here screwing down the insulation um, with all those washers that I talked about holding down the foam. They obviously have to come over to this side and then uh, they'll clean this up. We have our VersaGuard by uh, Versico here, our 60 mil EPDM roof that's gonna get laid up on top of here, all set to go. They typically will turn it up the wall there, you know, about 18 inches and flash that wall. We have that one roof penetration here you saw earlier. We had the pipe here. That got dropped down 
and will eventually get pushed back up and get the boot on there and get that flashed. But uh, you can see we have the last piece of uh, polyiso going in there. And uh, yeah, we'll get the uh, EPDM on top of this and uh, hopefully this doesn't get touched for a couple decades. So there you have it. Tapered roof insulation. This is an Atlas product. Polyiso, about R7 per inch. I think in the middle here, we're probably somewhere around four inches or so, close to R30 in the middle, down on the edges there, maybe about R20. So um, give you the chance to uh, pan around and just take a quick peek here. But um, yeah. We're here today with Jeff Bar uh, Barnard from Englert, and Englert is the manufacturer of the metal for our metal roof. Uh, it's an 032 aluminum, correct? correct? Yes. And it's a standing seam uh, roof that we are excited about because of the way that it connects with our solar array. And Jeff, can you tell us a little bit more about the process and the mechanical fastening? Yes, this is a, a double lock mechanically seam panel system. So this sample panel has the single lock or, or it's just nested together and then the single lock here, and then it's double locked here, and then we have S5 clamps that attach to the standing seam after it's mechanically seamed together, and a solar kit that comes with the S5 clamps to hold the solar panels on the roof without any exposed fasteners penetrating the roof. So it just basically uh, screws on with two, two clamp pieces that attach to it, and we were really excited about that from, and found the S5 folks a while ago. Um, because it means there are no penetrations to the roof. And having had solar arrays before where there was a slight concern uh, about, about how it would penetrate and how it would affect the longevity, we felt really good about this. And the lifespan of these, this is about what? 60 years and possibly more. So it's going to last lot longer than the solar panel system will, actually. Two generations so, of solar panels. It's a great platform because you want you want a, a roofing system that is going to last longer than your solar panel system. All right, so we're back up on the roof. Glad to be back, buddy. Good to see you. I ya. see the roofers have been hard at work. Last time we were here, we're putting on insulation, and they're putting down the start of the rubber roof on the other side. But it appears we're all done. Now, one of the things that's pretty typical of roofs is you want to turn it up on all the cheek walls. Yeah. We have a number of cheek walls here. Cheek wall being you know, the part of the slope roof that extends up beyond the flat roof here. And typically we call for, you know, probably about 24 to 30 inches. It appears we got even a little bit more than that. And you can see there are some remnants here. So that has the same contact cement or adhesive that they apply to the insulation below and to the backside of the rubber. Yeah, so we take the, we take the rubber and the glue, well, we take the glue first and we bring the glue up 30 inches, we're here, we're about 40 inches, and we bring the glue past it so that the rubber, and we roll it, bring and that attach up. it to right here. And then we just basically tape that off. Now we'll bring our siding down. I mean, as you can see where that tape there, that join is, with the one foot overhang, it's pretty darn well protected. Yeah. It's never gonna get really challenged. And um, yeah, I mean, what's left on the flat roof is, we talked about the plumbing pipe, we'll push that penetration up, we'll seal around that boot, and then we'll go around on the edges and we'll talk about how we're going to attack that. But I think that's probably best if we capture that when we're down on the ground. We did a mock-up and we learned a little something today. But uh, in addition to the flat roof, we got a slope roof going on today. So we can start with what's happening over here. You can see this is the large slope roof that goes over the living space, basically the dining room, the kitchen, and um, great room. But we start with our sheathing, but then right on top of that, we have zip systems, peel and stick underlayment. Now, high temp. And it's great point. This is a high temp underlayment. Now, the reason for the high temp underlayment is, is, you know, this temperature here can get up pretty high. I'm guessing we're probably, you know, up and around the 170, 180 degree mark in the direct sunlight. And it depends on the color of the roof. We're using a darker charcoal here. So that's gonna help with uh, elevating that temperature even a little bit more. But the point is, you don't wanna turn this to goo. So using their regular underlayment, this stuff here might start to uh, you know, ooze a little, might start to drip out from underneath the drip edge. 
the high temperature is made to take on, I think it's up, upwards of about 220 degrees in temperature, which even in direct sunlight in the middle of July or August, these roofs aren't going to get near that temperature. But, um, you know, this is basically what I would consider the first barrier. It's shedding water and weather temporarily while we put the roof on. And then over the top of this, we're going to put our standing seam metal roof, which we just so happen to have the guys conveniently right here on our other roof. So why don't we just take a walk over and uh, catch up with what they're doing. All right, so here we are. One of the things that's impressive about this roof, I think, is the fact that it's 50 foot long, Yeah. right? I mean, this is basically the, the field of the PV array that we're gonna place up on there. And we're gonna talk about how we're gonna attach that. But first, let's talk about the panels themselves. Um, I grabbed a bunch of pieces here. So this is your basic profile of the panel. You can yep. see that there's the simple bend and then there's that U-shaped bend where obviously this jumps over that on the uh, pieces. This is all Engler, Engler roofer, yes. right? And this is a Kynar finish. It's an 032 um, and it's aluminum, not galvalum. And one of the reasons, you know, we chose the aluminum is, is any cut edges on this, you're not at the risk of them rusting out. Right, so we get these. Obviously, the beauty again is these get extruded, so they're they're not made in some factory and then shipped out mm -hmm. here in the hope that we don't damage a 50 foot long panel. All these panels were literally made right down there in the backyard, and then stored down there and now brought up here where the guys are putting these together. Now, grabbed a bunch of little pieces here for our mock up. You can see these are the clips basically that hold the panel in place. And so this part locks into the previous panel. This clip comes down over the top and then will now get attached to the roof there and hold that side down. Now I've done some projects where we were by the ocean and the homeowner wanted it to be a little more durable. And it looks like these guys put these on about 12 inch centers. Yes, 12 inch and, on center, yeah. You know, I've done roofs where we can just tighten this up to six inches on center and get a little more durability out of the roof there against heavy winds or, you know, seaside um, installations. But so that panel basically gets held down in place here. This one is getting crimped to the previous panel. And then you can see here, I just grabbed some pieces out of the junk pile. And you can see how nice and neatly that just basically fits over the top. But we don't have to talk about my little pieces here because the roofer actually took the time to do a really nice display here for us. And um, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about this, Kevin. The, uh, this is that double fold seam, right? Yep. So it makes for a much stronger locking system than simply just folding over. You can see, maybe if I turn it this way here, you can see it a little easier, but you can see all three phases. This is basically just the lapping phase. And then we have the crimper machine as it goes up, it takes that and folds it under, but it doesn't stop there. It then takes that horizontal piece and folds it vertically. Yep. Yeah, so it's just a robot that drives up the drives up the roof and as you said takes both sides crimps it together and holds that in place yeah That's a nice finish on that and we were fortunate i think we, we got some really nice footage of it going from this and then coming out the other end of the crimper there now the last bit is i talked about this being you know basically a solar farm up on the roof here we have damn near perfect solar access here and that is direct south we're, you know, elevated above the ground significantly. The trees are far enough away. We don't have any shading. I don't think I've ever done a project that had much better solar access. No, this, this is house. perfect. And you said that when we came up to look at the house, when, when Scott was going to buy yeah. it, um, how well the solar array was here. Yeah, this is just pretty much, if you're doing a zero energy house, this is the kind of site you're looking for, for that. Now we, we talked about, it. I just want to point out, you can see the clips there. These guys are putting them in. They hold the panel with some clamps there. They're screwing this down through that. You know, one of the beauties of the underlayment is it's self-healing too, as the screw goes through. It 
tightens up there and I wouldn't say it's 100% waterproof like a boat, but it does seal around that screw significantly. Um, but the panels are going to take care of that work. Um, getting back to the solar piece, after we get that double crimp, we're left with that vertical crimp here. Let me spin this around. And so now when it comes to putting the solar on, typically we, you know, I call it a unistrut system. There's probably a number of different names, but unistrut being, you know, basically this bar system that's highly flexible. And these are S5 connectors. Now, the beauty of these are they don't get screwed or they don't get attached, right? Right. These just basically get set on top. And then you have set screws here that basically are just going to create some little dimples yep. on the side. But you're hard pressed. You're not, yeah, not, you're not pulling anywhere. that off. Nope. Um, and then this gives you the flexibility to basically place them anywhere on the panel as well as anywhere vertically the displacement. So regardless of what size PV panel you're using, the beauty of that strut system is, is it, it's, it's highly flexible. So, um, you know, I think that's uh, pretty much everything we need to talk about for metal roofing. We can certainly jump back to the studio. I'll pull out Big Red. This is always a great topic to uh, talk about in some of our eave details and fascia details. But why don't we jump down? We'll talk about what we did this morning. We looked at some mock-ups and uh, we made some final decisions Sounds good. Let's on what we're doing there. So why don't we head down? All right, so we're back down on the ground here. The last piece of the flat roof is the metal coping. Yep. So we put the metal coping up. We bring a small patch of rubber roof from the main roof to the metal coping. Now understand that the metal coping sits on top of the main roof. Yes. So that way there, if there's anything that ever gets underneath there in terms of water, it basically doesn't have an avenue to enter the house. Right, it comes right up over over the flashing and right up over gutter. that edge. Yep. Right. So one of the things today, you know, and I find it fascinating, um, you know, I, I, I've done a lot of roofing details, been doing this for a long time, but still you find ways to say, hey, maybe there's a better way or let's just take a second look at it. And so we have the coping here on the left, the one that's a little flatter, it's a little taller, and those guys cut that and bent it to the detail that I had. Mm -hmm. And I walked out here and I said, okay, after we put the, the gutter under there, we're not gonna have a whole lot of fascia. It just wasn't feeling as good as I thought it would feel. And I said, okay, let's mess around with it. So we did a couple samples where we brought it up a little less, but then we jumped to this other one here, which is, basically the same coping that we're using on the metal roof. We can make that leg a little longer on the inside so that we can get that patch. But then we just had them put a little sample of the gutter to get a feel for, okay, how does, how does all of this system fit there? Um, and so you and Daniel, you know, made up that system. And I think we're far better off with that right in the decision. You know, we had Scott out here um, talking about it. The decision was to go with the one on the right, so we're going to abandon the original approach there. I think this is far more sexier if you can believe that a roof has a sex appeal. And uh, I think that's the one we're going with. Yeah, How do this, you think? I love it. I, this was a great conversation first thing this morning when we came out here and looked at it. And we were just standing here and we looked at that detail. Right. And then it clicked. You had said something. What if we take this detail and we add it on the flat part? And like you said, Daniel and his guys made the gutter and we put it up and we all just like, yes, that's that's the look. So definitely a more sleek look and doesn't have that lip as this one did and we're seeing more fascia. And I'll throw in the word of the day, it adds a nice cohesiveness it does, to yes. the roofing system, right? When I look up there, it's all the same metal drip yep. edge now. And uh, yeah, I think that's gonna look good. So I don't know, we, we can certainly, uh, we jump and do some big red, but I think that's everything we need to talk about for roofing out here on a job site. Awesome. It's been a blast and I uh, look forward to getting inside here. Yeah, it will be nice and dry. We got a lot of things coming up. We got plumbing, mechanical rough. We got electrical rough. We got Zender and ventilation systems. We got Jesus coming out to do some insulation oh, yeah, with us. Here. And uh, so we got a lot of great stuff. So stay tuned. Come on back. Build Show Build Boston. We still got a long ways to go. Hey everybody. So 
Welcome back to the studio. Uh, yeah, roofing. Finally got a lid on that place. You know, roofing is one of those milestones that you're real happy to get because it means everything inside is potentially staying dry now, right? Up until that point, you went inside, things, you know, in rain. There's a few puddles here and there, but, uh, you know, it's it's just one of those things mentally that, like, giant hurdle. It's like, okay, the roof is on. We got some serious enclosure now. So, um, you know, one of the other things that I wanted to go off on a tangent about here, you know, as an, as an architect, and especially as a young architect many, many years ago, um, you know, I was uh, forced to go out and do a lot of talking with builders and such because we did a lot of training at Building Science Corporation. Um, so, you know, going out, having conversations with framers and roofers and all of the, the different trades really set a, a very interesting pattern for my career development. And, you know, for all you young architects out there watching this, and even you old geezer architects that are really grumpy in your old, in your, uh, old ways, um, you know, there, there is no substitute for going out to a job site and having a conversation with the people doing the work. They are extremely talented. They are extremely knowledgeable. And I'm always amazed that, you know, I'll strike up a conversation with framers and talk about, you know, yeah, we're doing this double frame wall. And oh, yeah, I did that back in, you know, the early 80s. We did a, you know, two or three houses like that. And, but there, there's a lot, a lot of history that's embedded in these people. And if we don't choose to extract it, a lot of that history just simply gets lost. So, um I'm always the kind of person where, you know, I go out there and I, I'll beat up these guys for a conversation and, and basically force them to have it because I know there's some hidden gems in there that uh, that they will share sooner or later if I can uh, get it out. But anyways, you know, that's, that's my uh, little piece of advice for today. Get out there, see the work being done, but more importantly, have a conversation with the people doing it, a, a really good intelligent one. They know what the hell they're doing. They do it very, very well um, for the most part. And uh, it's certainly worth having that conversation. So so what are we talking about today? You saw we were out there roofing. We got low sloped roofs. We have flat roofs, which we call them flat. But as you heard me mention out there, there's no such thing as a true flat roof. Every roof should have a slope to it. We want the water to go somewhere. It's either going to go to the edges and drip off, or we're going to take it to the inside, take it to a drain. In the case here, we're going to take it to the edges and we're going to drip it off on the sloped sections. We're doing a standing seam metal roof. You saw that out there. Um, the guy's putting it together. We have that one clip where you have that roof, um, roof sheathing and they put the panel, and the panel has that edge, and then they put that clip over it, and they nail that clip down in, and then that next panel comes and sits over that and goes up, and that one goes over the next clip, grabs that one, and gets screwed in there, but then that crimping machine comes here, and it folds that under twice and just makes for that nice, tight seam at that standing seam roof there. So let's talk a little bit about that low sloping roof. We have our standing seam metal roof. You saw it getting installed out there. We went through all of the panels. Um, when we talked about insulation, we talked about all of our sloped roofs are vented roof systems. So I chose to uh, bring up the detail at the eave here. You can see this is our rafter tail going out. We have our outrigger going out. Here's our fascia. Our metal roof is down here in our drip edge. We have a sub fascia out there. All of those you, you were able to see out there. Eventually we will have our gutters and our gutters will sit out here. Um, we might actually tighten that up. That'll probably get tightened up just a little bit. You know, with gutters, you don't want the water to necessarily go like that. You need it to go inside here. So we want to make sure that we're capture that gutter's high enough so it's capturing that water. Um, but the most important thing about 
the low sloped roof, other than the fact that we're doing those with the uh, standing seam metal roof, and you can see we have our high temp self adhere membrane. That one that we used out here was by Huber. Um, that that one's not. It's been on the market for I don't know a handful of years um, at best, where they've gotten into doing self adhered membranes um, for their products. Um, and then we, have, of course, have their 5 8 inch zip sheathing. Um, there we had our H clips. If you didn't see the uh, roof framing video, I suggest you go back and watch it. Matt King and his guys in LDS did a beautiful job putting that roof frame together um, out there. But we have our wall comes up. And there's our double top plate of our wall. You can see our zip R9 goes up to the soffit there. Um, we have our parallel cord truss here, and it has a tail that went out like that. And then you can see there's some other cords here that are drawn in there. Um, but if we're going through the, uh, the control layers and basically our strategy here, um, the metal roof is taking care of our water management, obviously, right? When it rains on here, the water goes down the metal roof, goes into the gutter, goes down our downspout, gets whisked away under control. Water management solved for. Airtight management. Well, we have our zip R9 coming up. We have our closed cell here. Um, we are going to pick up some closed cell here. That is basically more of a wind washing technique. Connecting to our double top plate. We're actually going to come in here and we have a Sega Myrex. It's a smart vapor retarder, but it is also an extremely effective air barrier. So on all of our sloped roofs, <coughs> we are going to have this smart vapor retarder membrane that runs along the underside of that. And then we'll actually fur down from that and put our ceiling in and put all of our lights inside of that furring. So by developing that cavity on the interior of our air barrier, it allows us to put holes in the gypsum board, et cetera, et cetera, without challenging the integrity of our air barrier. So that is pretty much where air stops. Um, from a vapor standard, well, that's a smart vapor retarder, so it is going to have moisture attacking it, but it's going to let some of it through, not as quickly as it would diffuse if the Myrex wasn't there. But we're just tempt attempting to slow it down a little, let the Zender do its job inside, managing the moisture levels there. What moisture does get through here, remember, this is a vented roof assembly, so you can see we have vents here, and the way we, I chose to do the vents are we have an exterior or an insect screen on the underside of the outrigger, and then basically we just have our one by boards, and I have the dimensions there, but we have basically a five eighths of an inch space in between those boards, and that comprises of three five-eighths or 15-eighths, basically, of almost two inches of ventilation space. And remember, that's continuous down through that. So that's going to allow that air to come up. Um, the closed cell here, coupled with an AccuVent ventilation chute here, the uh, ventilation chute is basically going to come up like that and come down. It has a flange that's going to come down and connect to the plate. And what that does is it suggests that any of the ventilation air that comes up, it cannot wind wash our insulation. So our insulation here is highly protected. That cannot happen. The air can only go up into the vent space. And the reason you want that is you don't want to put R60 worth of insulation here. Um, let's just say in terms of... the um, a lighter insulation um, installation where you went up in the attic and you put, say, 
R60 worth of bad insulation, but you left that edge exposed. Well, there's nothing stopping this cold ventilation air from going up and going into the insulation. And what that does is it really challenges the thermal properties of that insulation in that area as it infiltrates through that air permeable bat insulation. So the AccuVent forces it to have a path. The closed cell reinforces that path. And so that ventilation air can only go up through the ventilation chute. And then as the moisture migrates up, it gets on that ventilation train and gets exhausted out the high part of the roof through the top ventilation. Um, from a thermal perspective, we talked about our wall insulation. Up here you can see we basically have 20 inches, I call it 20 inches settled. And the reason I call it 20 inches settled is if I just said 20 inches of insulation, the insulator is going to go up there, he's going to blow up, blow in 20 inches. And over the course of um, some time, maybe six months, a year, that 20 inches is going to settle down to maybe about 18 inches or so. Um, I'm told you lose about an inch per 10 inches um, in settling. So 20 inches settled means that they're going to go up there and they're going to blow in, you know, somewhere around 22, 23 inches of insulation. And so that my goal is to get the 20 inches settled. That'll get us to an R76. It's a vented roof. As well as you can see, I put a brake line here, but here's that ventilation chute. And what I called for here was that the ventilation chute goes until we're 16 inches above the height of the insulation. And the only reason I did that is I don't want those guys, you know, cheapening out, stopping the ventilation chute here. And then you're at the risk of when the guy's going, because the, the ventilation chute's going to go in before the insulation. And if they put it really close here, then you're at the risk of the ventilation chute is in, it's down on the short side, they're blowing this insulation in, and somehow, because of its close proximity, they're blowing in here, and then you're at the risk of clogging that ventilation chute. By running it up here and getting that 16-inch displacement, I'm in the hope that the gentleman or lady blowing the insulation has absolutely no um, threat to plugging that roof vent there. So that's basically our sloped roof. Let's take a quick look at the eave of our flat roof section. And you saw the guys out there. Um, basically, we have our top plate here. We have our closure piece here. Uh, and then we have our eye joist rafter here. And that's our Roseburg RFP90. Remember that. And that's nine and a half inches there. And you can see there's, you know, lightly drew in those cords there. And we brought our flash up here of close cell spray foam. We have our header pocket here, which is going to get insulated there. And then on the top plate here, you can see we did a little flash, and that flash will turn the corner and basically follow that cord. So we're going to do about an inch and a half or so of the close cell spray foam up there, and then we'll fill the remaining, you know, eight to seven and a half to eight inches um, with a blown cellulose in there. Now, remember on the top of this, we have, you can see, here's our five eighths inch decking right here. And here we did plywood. Um, and the reason we did plywood here somewhere, I think I have it called out, five eighths inch plywood. Um, and some of you might be asking, okay, we use zip everywhere else. Why didn't we use zip there? Well, zip doesn't have a warranted um, use for zip on flat roof structures. It has to be up in that slope range of three or four before um, they warrant their product in use. So we switched to uh, a five inch plywood. We got that 
Um, we worked with Roseburg on that, so it's just part of the Roseburg um, family of products. There are iJoist LVLs and their roof sheathing there. Um, notice that the nine and a half inch LVL or iJoist goes all the way out to the end here. And you can see that goes out 21 and a half inches from the face of frame. And these are these are just intermittent blocks. They keep those joists from uh, wanting to roll. Um, and then on the outside here, we have basically our rough fascia. And the rough fascia basically just connects all of the ends of that uh, rafter joist there. But one of the things we were tasked with was the fact that this is nine and a half inches. This is five eighths. And then we have rigid insulation here that varies, but it's, you know, even here, we're probably close to like three and an eighth. So we're at three and three quarters, four and a quarter, 13 and a quarter, um, plus that 13 and a quarter. So that gets us about 14 inches of cross section in this area that we have to then hide. Um, and I say hide in a nice way because we have to use, remember when we talked about the elevation and I talked about size and scale, but breaking down the scale of that 14 inches to make that whole fascia and soffit feel somewhat acceptable and comfortable to anybody walking up there and, um, getting close to the house. So that, that 21 and a half, this gets us out. We're, by the time we're done, we're probably somewhere around 24 inches to the outside of the fascia. But what we did was on the outside of the rough fascia, we put a one by 12. And for this, we used all of the acre product. It's by Modern Mills. And then I have a little shadow board here, which is basically a, a one by three. So we have a one by 12, a one by three. And you can see I called out for a three quarter inch space. And then we came over the top of that with the one by eight. And I also called for a double two by four around the perimeter. And so all of these things have very distinctive um, purposes. The shadow board just allows me to displace this subfascia one by eight with the main fascia one by 12 and having that little shadow line that uh, falls in underneath that, that we would then put our gutter out on the face of, and you can see that'll connect down to our downspout there. But also, as we put this rigid insulation in, I wanted to ensure that by the time we got back to the house proper here, that we were somewhere in that R20-ish range with that. And so doing the math and coming back out here with the slope, well, that means that we needed a three-inch starter basically out there. And then we can do our sloped roof up there, get that R20 added to that, and then basically have our roof membrane attached to that rigid polyisocyanurate, the Atlas insulation on there. It's um, obviously made for um, the uh, low sloping flattish style roofs. It does come in eighth inch slope and quarter inch slope. And like I said, it's when I did the insulation um, video, it's probably in that R5.5 ish um, range there. But it already comes pre tapered, which I was surprised that some, some people didn't realize that that existed. So, yeah, you can already get it in the tapered um, format. So, it basically makes for that sloped roof. So, our water management is such that we actually have water moving to the edge and it will drip down. You can see we have our little drip cap here. And um, remember in the video out on the site there, we actually modified this a little and we went with a slightly different style that'll be like that. So it'll drip off 
into that gutter nicely. From a thermal perspective, we have our insulation coming up. We have our outboard insulation. We have our flat flash, and then we have our insulation on the inside of that. Um, from a vapor perspective, because we have that flash here, we have more than enough R value here that is going to protect this end. So this surface here will never get below the dew point in our climate zone to be at risk of, uh, what you call it, having any uh, problems with uh, moisture there. And then uh, from an air tightness perspective, again, having that flash, we have our plywood up here. The plywood was sealed with a uh, zip Huber ice and water shield there that we put on as a temporary roof. Um, so we're in uh, good hands from an air tightness perspective. Um, so there you have it. That's the, uh, the quick low down, low sloped vented roofs flattish style, unvented roofs. Um, those are the two roof styles we have out on this house. Um, I think they're both going to work extremely well and they're uh, going to provide a very long service life for this house and uh, be a, a model of uh, energy efficiency in doing so. Anyways, Steve Basic Architect, Big Red, and that's a story for roofing.